Hey, welcome back. Breaking. Flights over Syria suspended. Australia has suspended military flights over Syria, citing potential threats from Russia and Syria. From BBC. Australia says it is temporarily suspending its military air operations over Syria after a warning from Russia that it would treat aircraft from the US-led coalition as potential targets. The pause was a precautionary measure, the government said, without giving details. Moscow's warning came after the U.S. shot down a Syrian military plane. Russia also said it was halting communications with the United States aimed at preventing such incidents. Australia has deployed about 780 military personnel as part of the U.S.-led coalition fighting so-called Islamic State in both Iraq and Syria. The halt in operations comes as the coalition and the fighters it is supporting on the ground attempt to oust ISIS militants from the city of Raqqa, the de facto capital of the caliphate, they proclaimed in 2014. Australian Defence Force protection is regularly reviewed in response to a range of potential threats, the Defence Department said in a statement. ADF personnel are closely monitoring the air situation in Syria and a decision on the resumption of ADF air operations in Syria will be made in due course. Australia joined the US-led coalition in Syria in September of 2015 but did not carry out any operations in the country between March and May this year, according to the Defense Department. Its activities in Iraq, where it carried out 80 operations in May alone, will continue. Heating up between Russia a little bit. I could see them being upset, rightfully so. Tucker tells us everything. Whoops, sorry about that. Tucker Carlson confirms his appendix caused his abrupt absence. Surprised he didn't get an ulcer from stress or something. But it is strange, isn't it? So we got Tucker Carlson with just an illness. Bill O'Reilly gets fired. Roger Ailes is dead. And Sean Hannity is threatened with boycotting of his advertisers. What the hell is going on at Fox? Anyways, let's take a look. Well, if you were watching the show last week, you may have noticed I wasn't here on Thursday or Friday. Simple explanation for that. I got sick. I started feeling pretty bad on Monday, but decided to ignore it, since when you ignore things, they go away. It's always worked for me, but not this time. It turns out appendicitis does not work like that. But by Thursday afternoon, I was in the emergency room at the NYU hospital in New York City. I might still be there, actually, if it weren't for a nurse called Kathy McBride. She saw me across the room looking confused and took complete control, got me into the treatment pipeline, made sure I was okay. I will always be grateful to her for that. And to the other nurses at NYU who together might be the kindest group of people I've ever met in my life. Wonderful. Every one of them. No kidding. I also want to thank the surgeon who fixed me, Leon Pachter, stone cold genius with steady hands and a very nice guy. And above all, the person who was my advocate from the beginning and made sure everything went right, our friend and colleague, Dr. Mark Siegel, who's practiced at NYU for decades, by the way, and he joins us now in the friend zone to receive heartfelt thanks from me. So here's what I learned, doctor. If you, I've never been in been to a hospital before except to visit briefly. If you know a doctor and trust him and will follow his instructions, as I know and trust you, it makes all the difference, especially if he's smart and <laughs> knows what he's doing as you do. I mean, it really makes a difference. Well, I Tucker, think. networking really helps, and knowing the right people helps. But the thing in your situation was, you know, you, you had an appendix that was in trouble. It was close to bursting. It was in a bad location. And you needed an artist. I call it the art of medicine. And you mentioned Dr. Leon Pachter. There's nobody more skilled than him. So getting him in there was an insurance policy that we needed. Now, we talk about insurance all the time here, but I'm always thinking it's a headless horseman. It's a plane without a pilot. The pilot is the actual doctor. And people out there need to know if we make an insurance decision with these laws that end up putting doctoring in jeopardy, we're going to jeopardize the art of medicine. In your Breaking. Hillary exposed an illegal nuclear material sting. A newly leaked classified cable shows Hillary Clinton facilitated the transfer of highly enriched uranium, also known as HEU, involving several accomplices. HEU is the classification for uranium used in nuclear weapons. 
from IntelliHub, former Secretary of State <clears throat> Hillary Clinton facilitated the transfer of highly enriched uranium previously confiscated by the U.S. Department of Energy during a 2006 nuclear smuggling sting operation involving one Russian national and several Georgian accomplices, a newly leaked classified cable shows. So-called background information was provided in the cable which gave vague details on the 2006 nuclear smuggling sting operation in which the U.S. government took possession of some ATU previously owned by the Russians. The secret action request, dated August 17th of 2009, was sent out by Secretary of State Clinton and was addressed to the United States Ambassador to Georgia Embassy the Russian embassy, and Ambassador John Beryl. It proposed that the FBI director, Robert Mueller, be the one that personally conduct the transfer a 10-gram sample of HEU to Russian law enforcement sources during a secret plane-side meeting on a tarmac in the early fall of 2009. The FBI director was originally scheduled to return a sample from the DOE stockpile to the Russians in April, but the trip was postponed until September 21st. Paragraph number 6 of the leak cable confirms Director Mueller's September 21st flight to Moscow. Action request. Embassy Moscow is requested to alert at the highest appropriate level the Russian Federation that the FBI director Mueller plans to deliver the HEU sample once he arrives to Moscow on September 21st. Post is requested to convey information in paragraph 5 with regard to chain of custody and to request details on Russian Federation's plan for picking up the material. Embassy is also requested to reconfirm the April 16th understanding from the FSB verbally that we will have no problem with the Russian Ministry of Aviation concerning Mueller's September 21st flight clearance. So as we see it again from the Democrats and Hillary Clinton in particular, that they try to pin on us that Trump and the right is in somehow collusion with the Russia when they themselves are the ones who have done it and they try to pin us with it. <laughs>